Lunenburg Water District, PO Box 375, Lunenburg, Mass, 01462. Applicant is New Singular Wireless, AT&T Mobility, 550 Kachichuit Road, Framingham, Mass, 01701. Materials are available for viewing at the Planning Office, 960 Massachusetts Avenue, Lunenburg, Mass, 01462. Well done, Kachichuit. Thank you. Is there anyone here to represent the Water District? I believe it's a uh, representative from AT&T. Uh, oh, AT&T. Yeah. All right. Would you come up? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind coming up to the uh, microphone and identifying yourself. We apologize for the delay and appreciate your patience. By all means, Thank it's you. fine. Uh, my name is Dana Cardi. I'm actually a subcontractor for AT&T for uh, Cell Info, who's uh, listed on some of the materials that we submitted for the packet there. And do you want to give us a I mean, was it everything spelled out in the... Everything spelled out in the packet. Certainly, if you have any questions, by all means, um, you can feel free to address them to me now. Um, I believe you guys have the, you know, construction drawings and things. It's the addition of uh, three antennas to the existing facility. Um, doesn't change the site footprint. Um, doesn't change the elevation, anything like that. So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. But uh, otherwise, no comment here. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Mr. Chair, yes. uh, I'll direct you to a letter that I just passed out that I received from an abutter uh, that had passed it along and asked that I submit it as testimony as part of the hearing. Um, Mrs. Kelly lives at, um, lives on, at 117 Chase Road uh, and abuts the uh, water tower and, and cellular facility in the rear. She had a couple of concerns, and, and uh, if you'd like, you can read them into the record. If not, we can submit them written into the record. Uh, and I can I can run over them very quickly. Uh, her, do you, want, do you want me to just read them into the record? That's up to you. All right, yeah, I'd probably just a short statement. Um, uh, dear Mr. Bernie and Planning Board members, I'm writing on behalf of Gary Kelly and myself, residing at 117 Chase Road, Lunenburg. We are butters to the water tank owned by the Lunenburg Water District. We have several questions and concerns about the addition of a new cellular antennas, but we're unable to attend the public hearing. Safety. Currently, there are multiple cellular antennas on the tank. Is the addition of more antennas going to create safety and health concerns to the abutters? There are guidelines put out by the FCC. I don't pretend to understand this information, so I'm relying on the board to ensure that no safety or health issues, there are no health, safety or health issues. I have no doubt that the individual antennas going up are within my, the guidelines. My concern is the cumulative effect of the antennas once up. You'll find the website address and information to which I reference on page two. Access. Every month there is a cell company truck or vendor that comes up our driveway in an effort to access the cell equipment. They have even tried to cross our lawn to drive out to the water tank. The GPS sense system sends the drivers to our driveway, not the access road to the cell tower. When brought to the water department's attention, a small sign was put up at the end of the access road, but this has not alleviated the problem. One suggestion would be for the water department to turn, determine what the GPS address should be and supply all that supply that to all the vendors instead of the actual address. I have seen other companies provide this when GPS does not adequately, adequately get drivers to the proper location. Perhaps it is three chase road, but that would need to be confirmed. Equipment. The current permit does not allow lights to be on at night. There have been on occasions where a worker has left the outside light has left and the outside light will still be on. These can shine directly into our home, which is dis disruptive. We have also experienced occasions when the equipment was making very loud noises. The water department was called and we were informed that we needed to call the companies to have it resolved as that it's not their responsibility. We are not the ones leasing the space, so it should not be our responsibility either. I would like to understand the proper way for these issues to be handled. Thank you, Patricia Kelly. So I guess to reiterate her questions <coughs> through the board, um, do you feel as though there is a cumulative effect of all these antennas to the surrounding area or abutters? Um, to the best of our knowledge, no. Obviously, there are uh, nine antennas there currently. It would bring it up to 12. Um, 
you know, the FCC puts out its guidelines very publicly. All of the work that's done by any of the, um, you know, major commercial providers um, is not only in line with those guidelines, but actually the, the facility as a whole tends to operate well within those parameters. So even the addition of the proposed three antennas doesn't actually make a substantial difference in anything like RF output or things like that. Um, so yeah, I would say no substantial change between the way that the facility operates currently in terms of safety concerns. Um, yeah, obviously we won't know if 75 years down the road it turns out that a piece of equipment does one thing or another, but yeah, to the best of our knowledge, um, no problem with cumulative effects and everything does operate well within FCC guidelines. Uh, as far as things like the access and equipment concerns, um, well, it seems like part of it might be uh, addressed to the attention of the water department more than specifically to the proposed work here. Um, you know, at, at best, I can tell you that um, this type of work, from what I've seen, is usually scheduled to take about two weeks. Um, so, you know, if, if this particular rebutter is concerned about any type of, um, you know, uh, interruption or annoyance, um, it, it's for that span of time. And obviously, you know, to, to the best of my ability, at least, I can run a little note up the chain to say, you know, let the contractor know to be extra respectful of the abutters. Um, but it seems like some of these things, like the GPS and the lights being on or off, might be more to the water district as they actually operate the facility than to the contractors who would be on site for that span of time to uh, do the work. Through, through the chair, I think with the equipment specifically, the GPS, I, you know, <coughs> I, I take your, your, your point that it might be the water district. That's something that, that we, can, we can work with them on potentially. Uh, I think the issue with the equipment is, uh, I assume that AT&T or their subcontractors or providers are, are doing monthly, quarterly maintenance on the properties, and and the lights are are in conjunction with that um, equipment cabinet. And I, I think her concern is that the equipment is either failing or. Uh, maybe there's a generator issue or something to that effect where there's a loud noise and she's looking to identify who to contact to resolve that um, and I think with the out with the light I, I think it was probably one of those things where there's an uh, exterior light that comes on or is turned on when someone gets there either to be able to see coming in and out during dark winter months or something to that effect mm -hmm. um, I, I think from from my perspective that could probably be solved in several different ways. There could be a timer where the light is only allowed to be turned on for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I, I think that probably the more uh, consistently easy to, to manage as opposed to putting up like a, a motion sensor because it is a wooded area. There's wild animals, there's deer, and you could be you know, dealing with random lights coming on. And mm -hmm. if there's a, you know, a, time, a timed light that's only on for, a, you know, 30 minutes at a time, at least someone knows that they have that amount of time. And worst case scenario, it, it goes off. Right. Um, does, sorry, but um, does AT&T own and manage everything on that tower? Or is, is there um, other entities that own some of the equipment as well? To the best of my knowledge, um, there are no co-locating cell services. Anything else there would be uh, Lunenburg Water District equipment. Um, so I wouldn't, without, you know. But is every cell tower at and yeah to the best okay. of my knowledge okay. it is just uh, just at and <coughs> what is the uh, maintenance schedule so after this gets installed um, to the best of my knowledge it does not change from anything currently and um, so unfortunately like I said I'm, I'm a subcontractor for cell info so we're helping with the actual application for this special permit um, so basically our the information that we have access to is specific to this project. So we're not privy to the information about a, a regular maintenance schedule or um, other types of equipment that are on site. And um, one concern that I was even going to bring up to you is, um, you know, while I'm sure that uh, overall we at and wouldn't be averse to um, finding some type of solution for the light question. From my perspective, I think the concern is we want to make sure that within the purview of the special permit, which is you know what we are here to discuss, um, we wouldn't want to add any changes to equipment outside of what has been put into these construction drawings because that's what we're trying to trying to focus on. And 
for me as a representative the information that I have. So unfortunately, I can't answer a question about what would the actual schedule be. What I can tell you is that, to the best of our knowledge, there would be no change to the existing maintenance schedule, um, which it sounds like might be might be monthly based on the concerns of the abutter. But yeah, again, it's it's an addition of. Uh, is it of possible that the maintenance schedule is less frequent or more frequent? Um. Obviously, there exists the, the possibility of it. Um, the way that I would think about it is something like, um, you know, scalability. Um, there, the arrays are already in place. There's an empty slot on each of the three arrays. So all that's happening is one new antenna on each of those three arrays is going to be filled up. So if you think about it in terms of sort of uh, time management for the maintenance work to happen. It's a difference between a guy going in and servicing three antennas in a row versus going in and servicing four antennas in a row. Shouldn't make a big difference. Um, With that, can I assume then that the <clears throat> that there's a maintenance agreement in place for this? Um, as far as the terms of the lease go, um, the there is a certain amount of flexibility for AT&T to do as needed repairs with notice to the owner, so to uh, Lunenburg Water District. Um, the, like I said, as a particular company that's sort of focusing on this as a project, um, not as AT&T overall, um, the, based on the information that I ha have access to, um, yeah, basically when AT&T needs to do some type of uh, maintenance repair work, they give some advance notice um, to the water district and then they, they go ahead and do their thing if there isn't any uh, concern there or recently scheduled. Okay. So, oops, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, but the access is Polk Road? Yes, it is. Is that like a, um, a lock gate? the maintenance people have a key to? Uh, you know, I honestly don't know. Okay. I don't believe that there is a gate on Pope Road, though. I'm thinking. I think the road itself prevents most people from going down it. So, Mrs. Kelly uh, sent along this uh, in, in the case of cellular and PC, uh, PCS cell site transmitters, the SEC RF exposure guidelines recommend a maximum permissible exposure level to the general public of approximately 580 microwatts per square centimeter. And you fall within those guidelines with this addition? Yes. Okay. Um, again, you know, um, any major commercial carrier is, is well aware of those guidelines. And um, yeah, to the, to the best of my knowledge, the facility actually operates well within those RF exposures. Well within. Okay. Can you, can you, I guess, can you quantitate? Uh, I cannot quantitate. I, I do not have a specific number to give you. Could you get those? Uh, yes, we, we could get an, an RF report for the site. I, th I understand this letter to suggest that adding more to the current location, just what is the impact? That's, 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 that's what her concern that's, is. Yeah, that seems to be the general concern. And I understand what you're saying, which is that you know, you're here to look at the information that's in front of us, and you can ask, answer the questions based on the information that's in front of us. And so your, your point, David, is there, mm -hmm. um, what's the timeline if we have questions that we can get answers to them? Um, you're usually pretty responsive in your experience working with at and Yes, I would say that they're, they're generally quite responsive. Um, obviously, if it were something like a request for a specific RF report, um, mm -hmm. you know, because they would have a specific department or a, a third-party vendor that they would have to go to, then that might take a couple of weeks, depending on how, um, you know, how tightly scheduled that <coughs> vendor is. Um, but yeah, I have not had any problems getting information back on them. If you have a specific question, um, yeah, within a week or two, you should be able to get that information right back to you. Um, Mr. Chair, may we, based on my read of the board so far, it sounds that there are some outstanding questions. Um, how do we formulate those to the applicant? Public hearing, so we would probably propose those to the applicant and then ask for a continuance. Okay. Well, all things being equal, if they're going from 9 to 12, it's going to be a 33% increase on whatever that was, microwatts per centimeter? 
Well, I would guess, but I don't know if the equipment well, is exactly yeah, the same. No, yeah, I so. think being equal is a very poor assumption. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, I mean, as far as numbers of antennas. Yeah. So I guess that that sounds like that's a question, is what is the... Um, RF exposure. Well, 30-plus 30, 30 percent increases, of course. Yeah, oh, that's what you say. It's, it's pretty large. Yeah, right. we should find out what that is. What, I agree. What that number exactly is. Did you... Uh, in the original decision, it said there were uh, an abutter requested an NEP analysis that can be only be provided by the applicant. Is that what is the NEP analysis? Um, yeah, I don't know if you know what that is. Um, it, if they were talking about a, um, a NEPA filing or a NEPA report, um, yeah, I forget the acronym, but it's an, an overall environmental. Um, yeah, an, an overall environmental impact statement that does include elements of the, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Like health effects, ecological effects, um, community concerns, things like that. Oh, it yes. wouldn't have the specifics of an RF report. That would be a separate document. I think, yeah, I know what you're talking about now. They, and I, you're, I believe you're uh, asking for a waiver from that anyway, right? Because it's already been done once before for uh, that. Yeah, within, yeah. Uh, I think, in the last two years. Yeah, and I don't really have a problem with that because I don't think there's structurally or, you know, in terms of the infrastructure, really anything other than the additions to the an existing antenna, right? Right, so. right. So, I mean, I, that wouldn't, I don't necessarily mind that they skip that. I just want to know about the RFP maximum load, you know, whether it goes over the human consumption rate. Mr. Chinnis, what are your thoughts? Exposure rate. You know I'm always looking at you for your... Uh, my thoughts are that uh, AT&T is uh, more than likely living very responsibly by the, uh, by the laws of the FCC and would not be proposing to add antennas that would put their tower in excess of the limits if the FCC allows them to have, which is would be compliant with what's expected. Um, I don't know a lot about cellular communications, but in regular radio communications, um, just the addition of antennas doesn't necessarily increase power outage. Mm -hmm. You can have special tuned antennas for specific purposes, but still have a, a relatively equal amount of power uh, distribution from from the channel. Um, so I would. Uh, I mean, we certainly can request for the information and get it. I'm 95, if not higher, percent sure that AT&T will produce a report that says they're fully compliant with uh, the regulations, and the addition of the antennas would not cause them to exceed any kind of limits. I, think in, put on I just think in these days, uh, it's, a, it's a concern of a lot of people, and I think someone around here should have those numbers, uh, at least have some basis for, you know, going to them and finding out for, uh, for a concerned citizen. I know it exists anytime you do any solar, you know, there's always the question about RF. By solar, you mean cellular? No, I'm anything electrical. <laughs> I guess we can, is that the only main concern? I mean, we can take a straw poll whether we feel it's... I have another question, um, and I don't know the answer to this, which is at the, um, uh, what structures nearby are, are close in elevation to the water tower? Uh, my guess is none. But. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I also wouldn't have that specific information. Um, we, we had the abutters list, but uh, I don't have the specifics on elevation of surrounding properties. Uh, I also don't believe that there are any, but I yeah, unfortunately can't give you that information. The interesting uh, thing I, is oops. generally with uh, antenna structures, yeah, you they design them to be a hub. Right. Yeah, and they're and they're they're generally on a tower, and, and the the highest radiation is at the base of the tower, and then that's typically where they would measure from. But the interesting thing here is it's a water tower, so it provides this fantastic ground plane uh, as a basis, which shields the the ground right below it. So the antennas, if I recall correctly, are placed in the center of the water tower on top of the water tower. So if you're standing on the ground next to the water tower looking up, you don't actually see the antennas. And this should be consistent with the uh, construction drawings yeah. you got there. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, so you're actually, you're, it actually provides more shielding because it's a water tower. It, it, it shields the, uh, the ground level radiation even better. 
Water tower is a really good spot for a so, cellular antenna. Yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. What? So I understand your reluctance to have anything change that would add any kind of equipment to the to the special permit or the necessity for any equipment. So what? What? How are we going to handle that? Because I do think that's a legitimate concern with the lighting. I mean, we require other, and I understand it's because it's you know basically they got to go there at whatever time they can to fix the antenna. Or, but sometimes in an emergency situation. So any suggestions for how to handle that? In the original other than decision, just blowing it off. <laughs> in the original decision from yeah. March 11th, 2003, condition 21, it just says the lighting requirements will be in compliance, including no nighttime lighting. But in compliance with what? Is it, is it possible yeah. to send a friendly reminder I don't think from the like board this, right? over to the so water department? Right. And uh, just let them know that this a resident has brought this up as a concern, or do we need to condition I, it? I believe that the resident has contacted the water department, and the water department said, well, that's not our equipment. The leaseholder is responsible for that item. And I think... And the current and, and, leaseholder and, and, and is not at and the, they, they, I believe they are the current leaseholder. AT&T or some subsidiary or a, a, yeah, you know, sister company. Is, is the or, tenant. I mean, I, I don't want to say AT&T because I know when you get into towers, a lot of different companies, you know, there's Omnistar and okay. Towercom and, you know, they just own the towers, but they work with specific... Yeah. We're still know, talking about the lights? Cellular providers. Yeah, the light. I, I, I mean, I think, and I, I spoke with Mrs. Kelly before she wrote this letter, and, and I said, it's, you know, if you... Want, if you can't be there, it's best to submit your comments in writing. And she said it's not all the time. She said it's not on every night. It's no. yeah. sometimes someone forgets to turn the light off. Right. So I think that in the context of the existing approved permit, they're substantially compliant. And True. if someone were to look to carry out an enforcement action, it would be a matter of finding that the light wasn't on, or the light was left on, sending an enforcement letter that said you have 30 days to make sure that that light yeah, goes off. And so I, I think it's a it's a onesie twosie sort of thing. It's more annoying than consistent issue. So you could carry over all the conditions that there's no nighttime lighting. You could even condition that they install some device that prevents the light from being left on after a service technician has, you know, without the need for the service technician to turn it off. But that light is owned by the water department, correct? I don't believe so. I believe it's on the equipment cabinet okay. for the cellular company. So it's leased that? by them. Can you confirm that? And it, yeah. So if it's your responsibility, we're gonna, we're, we we have to and make I mean, sure. And I think that's, that's a simple condition. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that that alters their construction drawings. Yep. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a matter of. I, I can't imagine that AT and T or their subcontractors or subsidiaries don't have a dearth of electricians right. on staff yeah. that could solve that with a yep. simple. You know, switch fix. Yeah, uh, and you know that's a couple of turns of a screw, and you know maybe a clip of a wire here and there. But uh, you know, I, I don't think that we're. That's not a costly fix. Yeah. Well, not even cost. I don't think that we're altering the plans that were submitted in yeah. this. It's a. I would I would consider that a maintenance item as opposed to a change in design or plan. And I don't know if you disagree with that. Um, no, I, I think that's a fair appraisal of the situation. Um, just to confirm, did the resident in question, Mrs. Kelly, uh, specify which light it was, or is it just a, a sort of general? The it's just. A, I mean, I think it's just light coming through the woods right into her bedroom, which is. Yeah. I know uh, it, it's a hard. It's hard to nail down. I. I ha I'll infer from my conversation with her that. It was probably associated with a visit up her driveway from a company that has cellular something or other on their truck, and then later that day or the following night, they recognized that the light was still on. And, and I, I take your point that it could be the water district up there checking their pumps or their treatment or whatever, but yeah. um, we can also send them a friendly reminder. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll run it up the chain. Um, I'm not 100% sure what what they'll be able to say or if there would be any type of pushback on that question. Um, would it? Do we imagine that it would be acceptable um, if it were stated in some fashion, you know, um, 
that uh, at some point in upcoming maintenance work we'll sort of bundle this in um, yeah I, I think that you know with, so. the, with the approval of the special permit you would have two years to act upon it and you right. know it, it would right. I think if it were to be a persistent issue, there would be, you know, the ability for the town to look at enforcement action. Um, I think some statement on the record or in writing would probably, I, I can't speak for the board, but I, I think that's more or less what you... you yeah, some kind of a simple condition to get put a timer on it. Yeah. So it doesn't come on at night, or it doesn't remain on at night. And to better answer your question, the, the abutter in question is to the, the southeast of the tower. Thank you. Question. So this is dated March 7th? Correct. When did we receive it? Uh, probably March 8th. And where it was testimony, I felt that it was not something to be circulated prior to mm -hmm. the hearing because you okay. would be receiving it without the applicant's benefit of, of also receiving it. Again, do we have the ability to reach out to her at this point sure. and find out exactly what light she's talking about? Yeah, so I, 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 can, I can get in contact do. with her. So that way you yeah. can relay that information yep. to them and just make it easier for everybody? It's it for me. <clears throat> yeah, there wouldn't be a need for these things, right, if we weren't all putting up cell phones to our faces. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> being on the other end of all this radiation that's right, coming right. out. Right, sleep so, next to it. Mm -hmm. So I do think on a certain level, um, that while there is the the concern about the dangers of cell towers, to me are, are real concerns, because we really don't know what the effects are of cell phones in your lives for 50 years, that we just don't have that data yet. Um, so I think it would just be beneficial if we did get that, just so that we could you know, provide to the residents and the abutters the best information that we had available and said, you know, based on that you know we were able to make a sound decision but it's a little difficult i think without it now with that information i certainly to answer your question mr chair um, i would support this with the condition of a timer and with just a little bit more information verifying what i presume to already know which is that this is not going to be a negative impact at all um, to organic life <laughs> uh, i concur i, I don't you know <clears throat> I just want the information. Someone should have it on this board. We mm -hmm. should do our due diligence. And uh, I, with the lighting, um, uh, you know, in check, I think the rest of it looks like it's it, it, it could be their problem. It could be the water tower's problem. So, you know, who wants to get in the middle of that fight? But um, are there any uh, uh, waivers that we need to consider? There's a whole list. Yeah, they so. asked for a series of waivers. For yeah, the so do we? Oh, they're all pretty reasonable. Yeah, I did. So, but we should. You could take them as a package. Okay, that's. I'm, I'm kind of leading that way. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to lead the chair or anything. No, no. <laughs> Make a motion to waive whatever they asked to be waived. Or? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I move then that we request the waiver, request all waivers, requ approve oh. all waivers requested. Second. Any discussion? I'd like to know what the waivers are. Yeah, they're in the list. They're, they're in there. Yeah. There's a in the letter and B on the checklist. Okay. Checks. Um, where was it? Find it? Oh, yeah, you oh, got wow. it. Yeah, there are a lot. Yeah. Hmm. I lost mine. I think in general what you'll find is they're associated with the lack of structure construction and the attaching of equipment to an existing structure. Yeah. So there's not a significant change on the site outside of the issues that were already brought up by the abutter. Yeah, I don't have any issues with any of the waiver requests. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So that goes the waivers. Um, before, is there any public comment from the public? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, um, is there any more questions for the applicant from the board before we close the public hearing? Well, wait a minute. Oh. Are, are we not closing the public hearing? Oh, yeah, so you thought you were asking a continuation because yeah. you wanted more information. Oh, I. 
didn't know if you were making we that recommendation as a motion that you were okay or you... Uh, the motion was just to approve the waivers. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. But I do think that we are pending more information from them. Okay. So that would be a, a motion, a, a to, motion continue. to continue the meeting to the 26th of March. I w or, well, it sounds like or it would either be the 26th of March or the 12th of April, depending on the 9th the of April re receipt of the RF of report. The materials, yeah. And it sounds like you're not going to get that back in two days. So I, I was going to ask for a brief clarification. Um, if... So a full sort of RF report, really like grinding all the numbers, checking all the boxes, that would probably take a couple of weeks. Um, it is possible if it would be, um, you know, sufficient to assuage your concerns, um, maybe to get like a statement from a registered engineer or somebody who could basically say like, this is, you know, based on the um, existing loadout and the proposed loadout, um, you know, just going off of the um, the specs of the equipment itself. Uh, these are your estimated numbers uh, relative to your FCC guidelines. If that type of statement would be enough, then it's, it's possible that we could, at the very least, we could get a quicker turnaround on that than doing a full RF report. I'd be satisfied with that. I would also be satisfied with that, yeah. But then Should we, we get it, it to the 26th? I don't know if we need a peer review. Um, I want no, something. Uh, I want it. Well, excuse me. I'm sorry. What I'll say is about peer reviews. With this, yeah. is finding a peer review RF engineer. Yeah. Is an extensive <laughs> search. So they kind um, of are <laughs> are one anyway. Because well, yeah, the, the last yeah. time I did this, I had to drive him in from Vermont mm. and have him stay over and drive back, and he has now passed away. This, <laughs> this gentleman. Uh, we were tough I, on him. Just from the drive? <laughs> just from the drive. Uh, and I know that um, in some of my communications with other planners, there have been people who've been diligently searching for other RF engineers who were doing peer review. Uh, because I think in general, uh, a lot of them are, are attached to companies of some yeah. manner. Uh, I, I think, you know, if an engineer is putting his stamp on a letter, there's some confidence that it's a reasonable and educated uh, document. That yeah. they're not they're not fudging it. To, no, I agree. I, I don't have a so, problem with that. I, I don't. I think that. No, I mean, we fine. can do that. I, I don't know that it's necessary in this instance. I think she's looking more for peace of mind yeah. than to contest that yeah. the numbers are are wonky. That's what I get from her. Yeah. I think it's sufficient. Okay. So one so, more question about the dimensions of these antennas. Are they going to be the same dimensions as the existing? Uh, yes. Um, at least substantially the same. They might be a couple inches different, but they, they fit on the same arrays and they are the same shape. So they're not going to be any, like, like 10 feet taller? Uh, no, this will not change the elevation of the site. And so, you are, we can separately, I, I can get the information about what is near this. Um, same similar elevation so I don't think that that's something that you need to do for us and I will say that we meet Monday again so we would need information by the letter of our regulations by tomorrow at 4 o'clock hmm. you have the ability to request a waiver um, I think that the board I don't Obviously, don't want to speak for them, but they're they're recognizing no because we compressed. We skipped because we caucus. we we moved caucus, so we're having meetings two weeks in a row. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you might have missed that meeting. <laughs> so um, you could ask for a waiver on that time frame, uh, especially where the information they're asking for is really just a confirmation letter. It's not a specific something that's going to need to be reviewed and um and, and i would ask that we have it before noon on friday on thursday rather to allow us to distribute it appropriately to the board so they have the weekend to mull it over okay. uh, and that you know Does we are not able to vote on waivers that aren't in writing but i think you could probably get a straw poll from the board on whether they would accept that waiver uh, and allow that continuance through monday does anyone have an objection to if they get the information to us by Thursday? No. 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 Granting a waiver? No. Nope. No. So we need to grant it? To no. You, you need it in writing. So just so he knows to submit that as part of it. Uh, and is, is Nate 
with your company? Um, yes, Nate is the CEO. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, we have his communication, uh, his his uh, contact information. So we'll pass. Um, would you like my contact information as well? Yeah, if you have a card, that would be great. Um, oh, we are, okay. We have Dan's as well. Okay, okay so good, perfect. We'll we'll verify with Mrs. Kelly which light it is, and and we'll let you know, and then we'll go from uh, there. Pass anything else along that you might need. So, only that I'd like to move that we continue this to uh, March twenty sixth. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? I just have one more question for. Him. Sure. How is, if you may not know the answer to this, but how is this going to uh, impact the residents or people driving by's, I don't know, quality of service? Um, once the new antennas are installed, service should be improved, um, yeah, for, for people nearby and at larger areas. Um, my understanding is that it, it is both to... Um, improve overall coverage and quality within that coverage zone but also to sort of look forward to um, predicted increased data needs for the local market so um, the idea is that not only will service be better for everybody now but it will be better for a couple of years moving forward as people uh, grow even more attached to their cell phones and you know live with them attached to their faces and things like that <laughs> hopefully i won't have to see you guys for another couple of years <laughs> All right, we have After a motion Monday. and a second for the continuance. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thanks. All right. Again, thanks for waiting. All right, minutes approval. So we have the minutes from February 26, 2018. Does anybody have any comments? Edits? <sighs> Seeing none, and uh, we have the public hearing from <coughs> Does anybody have any comments on that? Seeing none. All right, we'll go right into committee reports. Thank you. Uh, capital planning. Capital planning will not be meeting again till next fiscal season. Okay. Um, the stormwater task force we have not met since our last meeting the agricultural commission had to reschedule their regularly scheduled meeting um, and that will be happening this Thursday at the library seven o'clock uh, at the old Ritter library seven o'clock MJTC was canceled due to weather uh, MRPC um, I don't I'm not sure they had the, the, I think the meeting's coming up. Is that right? Or did I miss it already? They're, they're yeah. Thursday meetings, aren't they? Yeah. yeah so you get Thursday snowed out? Yeah, we... I can't remember. I think, uh... I definitely missed it. I think I think you probably got snowed out, if I recall correctly. But they did send out a couple of messages. I think everyone received them probably in your email about the upcoming uh, uh, marijuana uh, session. And... Really? Discussion? Yeah. And I can't remember what the other one Next was. Next one's on the 5th. Next one's on the 5th. Uh, and there's nothing for open space on the agenda that I'm aware of. I <laughs> don't like that look. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. <laughs> charter review? Yeah, charter review. We, the tr we are at our last, at our meeting last Wednesday, the um, committee approved the draft changes. Um, I think the vote was eight to one. So, we are um, going to be scheduling a public hearing, um, I think at the first week of April. And yeah, I think everything, everything went really well. So I think that the key highlights um, coming out of the Charter Review Committee are, are you know, we're, we did retain the town meeting structure. Uh, we did retain um, the current, um, timeline of town meeting being on Saturdays. We also added in a second town meeting, um, regularly scheduled annual town meeting. So in other words, it will be a spring town meeting and a fall town meeting um, every year. Um, some won the town clerk position, moving that from um, 
elected to appointed. We also looked at the language uh, that Mr. Bernie sent over as well as um, other personnel in town and really consolidated, um, made sure that the language was consistent for all boards with employees. One of the changes that Mr. Bernie may like is that we um, realize that his role is as there's two parts to it. One is land use director, uh, and the other part is, um, I'm not sure the title that we use, what maybe was, what's your, what's the current one that's in there? Jedi, I think. <laughs> I think it's planning director or something like that. So there's a portion of, of Mr. Bernie's job that looks at the other, um, the Board of Health, you know, it's over, over, you know, the, um, Building commissioner that has nothing to do with us. So we did separate your titles uh, within the charter to differentiate between those roles. So that way, because um, land use is more broad. Um, so I think that you will see that there is, uh, you know, some positives there. Um, I think overall, everyone was really engaged. It was an excellent process to be a part of. I think uh, the majority of the town, we really, with the surveys that came out, uh, the feedback from those surveys were heavily implemented into it. And the other substantial change is changing the name of the Board of Selectmen to Select Board. Um, so that way it is a more um, inviting title for women and men and all members of the community. That, I think that was the key kind of driver behind that. Um, and the feedback we received was more than half of the people surveyed really didn't have a preference one way or the other. Um, but of the remaining half, there seemed to be a clear preference for um, a more neutral name. So I encourage everyone to come to the public hearing. Well, it'll be posted at least two weeks you know, in advance. And uh, these changes are, in my opinion, small, but they clarify the language in the charter. Some things that, that was really helpful was meeting with the town manager. Um, she was able to really point out several areas that just lacked clarity. Um, but we had got some great feedback from all the boards and committees, so that's that. All right, Green Communities Task Force met. Uh, we submitted our grant application. Um, I believe it was in the, roughly the amount of $230,000, which included all the projects we had recommended and administrative fees, so to offset some of the costs of some of the town employees that do some of the work for us. Um, and then looking forward, we're in the future year, we're going to be looking into the audits for, that the Board of Selectmen did regarding the town buildings. The, that they did and also to uh, look into buying the street lights and upgrading those um, so that's something we're looking forward to do sorry I don't have all the information in front of me but and that's it um, as far as the agenda item number eight we're gonna pass over that because that's not necessary um, directors items all right, so uh, you know, David, I'll I'll piggyback on what you said uh, on the twenty eighth, which is Wednesday, five o'clock. MRPC is going to have the adult use marijuana law discussion um, with a representative from KP Law and from and with Kay Doyle, uh, who is a commissioner on the Cannabis Control Commission. Um, I attended CPTC, the Citizen Planner Training Collaborative, on Saturday. Uh, that was the one of the sessions that I went to. Uh, very informative. Um, they're a good pair. They ran through both. Uh, KP took care of the addressing sort of the municipal side and how they're advising their clients. Um, you know, as with any lawyer, they're telling you it's not specific advice. It's you know, general guideline. Um, she doesn't answer specific questions, but they do talk about certain points of law. And if there's a question of interpretation or how a town may address um, sort of general comments, they they were handling that question. Uh, the commissioner talked more from what the state's perspective was, where the state was, answer questions on how the state may be interpreting certain provisions or, or things that they're doing. Uh, if you're able to attend, I, I do encourage you to. I think the one important thing to sort of touch on is uh, the state is encouraging special permits for adult use categories. Um, the AG has approved uh, at least one, and there are two or three more uh, headed her way uh, to be approved 
um, for special permit of retail or cultivation or other of the, I think there's five or six categories of marijuana establishments. So um, I think there's ways, I think that opens up the ability for us to put this through zoning uh, and do it in a way that gives some reasonable control. Um, and again, as with anything else, this, the, the, the statute says unreasonably impracticable. Uh, is the test for uh, what you can't require people to do. So you can't, you know, you can't say, you know, you have to stand on your head and, you know, serve people through a mail slot in order to get the permit, but... <laughs> oh, no, it's crystal clear. Uh, I got it. <laughs> yeah. Unreasonably impracticably what? Unreasonably <laughs> impracticable. Yeah. Uh, but there, there's a lot of good information out there. Um, the cultivation cap is I think an important one. No single entity can cultivate more than 100,000 square feet total statewide. So you could have a site that hosts multiple entities cultivating up to that 100,000 square feet, but each, each separate cultivation area is subject to all of the security requirements of the Cannabis Control Commission. So they can't have one security plan for the whole place and have like a curtain wall between them. They each have to be independently secure for their 100,000 square feet. So I think that's probably one of the things we would be up against most would be cultivation <coughs> facilities. Um, and, you know, we had a proposal for 400,000 square feet. That's not a possibility now, at least not the way it was originally proposed. Uh, so the state is, is addressing some of those issues. Um, and we'll, we'll really start to dig into this in the next couple of months. Okay. Uh, Even that 400,000, that was a co-op concept, I believe. So I, think, I think in part it was intended to be, but he was also looking at building two singular greenhouse buildings that would just have like, here's your area, here's my area, and, and that's not, you can't even do that now. They're, we're talking, you know, party walls and security systems and, you know, locked secured entrances between them, and, and I just, I don't think that, I don't think he was at that level at that point. So, um, that, so it basically wipes out the concept then of a co-op. No. Uh, no, I don't think it necessarily does. I think it changes the face of how it gets done. Um, because I think if you have the land, the power, the infrastructure, uh, there's still a cost savings to doing co-op uh, on the infrastructure construction and layout side of it. Um, but I think it, it changes the face of how you build the building. It changes how you lay things out. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think you end up with a a two-tiered security system. You end up with a site security system and then an individual building security system, whereas before it seemed like they were looking to just secure, do one layer of site and building that kind of intermingled. Uh, you probably know more about it having talked to him a little bit more and, and having some expertise in that. But uh, the rest of CPTC focused on um, uh, municipal vulnerability, which uh, at least the sessions I went to, which sort of leaned back towards stormwater. Uh, I've spent a lot of the last couple of weeks in, in the stormwater realm. Uh, so, you know, as specific to the stormwater task force and coalition and MS4 permits, so uh, I don't think you guys are overly interested in that. I've met with a couple of a uh, couple, three, four people interested in a variety of different projects about town um, in different stages of, of where they want to do it. Some residential, some, I guess I'll call it distribution, um, and some just general inquiries on, on land. Uh, and then finally tonight is um, a follow-up business uh, economic development meeting over at the library. Uh, they're probably wrapping up or have wrapped up by now, uh, sort of talking about where the town will go with some of their uh, district local technical assistance grants uh, for both the business brochure uh, and the permitting guidebook. Uh, I don't believe MRPC was participating uh, because they were still waiting for approval from the state, uh, but the town manager and the business community were going to sort of get together and 
uh, hammer out some general ideas. Uh, the meeting started at 6.30. The business community was going to start putting together um, the framework for a, a local business association and whether that's joining up with the Townsend Business Association or forming a sort of sister organization that works in parallel but um, you know, in conjunction with them, that was sort of all to be determined. Uh, it's good to hear that there's some fruit. Yeah, they're, fruit they're, that they're, certainly, that they're certainly moving in that direction. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you folks know Eric Holt. Uh, he lives down Matt's area. Um, he's sort of volunteered to take the lead for, for the short term and, and be the, the driver of the process. Uh, so... Uh, you know, it's nice to have a champion and someone who's going to kind of yeah. kick that process along. So, yep. um, you know, uh, hopefully that will will have some uh, positive, some impact. finality and, and final final impact. And yeah. you know, over the, over the next six or eight months, as they sort of start to coalesce. Sure. Um, the only other thing I really have for you is is I think at our last meeting. I brought you uh, a memo from the building commissioner. I had emailed you on the Whalem Overlay District and the uh, issue of the 10 acres and his recommendation to uh, obliterate that from the bylaw as a way to uh, continue to instill control in the special permit process on the density. Um, I don't know that I ever got a final yes or no on that. Uh, so in the articles that I did submit for town meeting, that 10-acre requirement remains. Obviously, we still have some time, uh, and that's why I, I want to just clarify that the board uh, in majority is in support of striking that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it's a very simple removal, and you know I don't think it necessarily changes anything, and uh, I can get that right over. But the intent was to give the board control. Correct, over and then so removing the ten acres just sort of solidifies that control. That. Yeah. So. Do you need a vote on that? <coughs> it's always nice to have one. I'd entertain a motion to strike the ten acre requirement from the Whalem overlay. So moved. By law. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So this is how I remembered it. I just didn't know that we had actually landed on that. So <laughs> we'll take that out and make sure that the, the change language is over for for the warrant closing on Thursday. Uh, and tomorrow night, I know that the selectmen are going to start their review of already submitted warrant articles. Uh, I expect we'll get a special invitation because of the uh, thickness of what we submitted. Uh, but uh, I, I, uh, I, the reading. I anticipate to be there. Um, I, you know, not that I expect any of you guys to uh, come and sit through their meeting, but just a heads up. All right. Is that all? That's all I got. All right. Notices and communications. I think we would have gotten all those. I do uh, have a question on those. Marjorie sent something out um, from Fitchburg a little while back. And when we see things and we want to, what is our, I guess, right to show up? And it's a public meeting. But if it's in another community, That's still a public, public meeting. Still a public meeting. So we can, can we talk? You, sure. you identify yourself as a, you know, okay. resident of Lunenburg. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, every community does it differently, so they may boo and hiss at you, but. <laughs> I don't know if you wrote me back on that one, Marjorie. You may have, and I just probably didn't see it. But uh. you had, when you first came on the board, you had inquired about those notices. And yeah. You spoke, but that was when you first came on the board. Yeah. Now, since Pittsburgh's a city, do they do the same? Follow the same process? Yes, yeah. their planning board does. Now they're approving their bylaws is different because they go through city council. Within so the they, they, if they want to do a bylaw, they just write it and take it to city council. There's three readings and council has their own procedure for how they approve it, but they don't have to wait till town meeting to do it. They just write it and when it's ready, boom, they're off to town to city council. I thought they had ordinances and we had bylaws. Well, ordinances, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, potato, potato. Okay. Sure. It's just spelled differently. Spelled differently. <laughs> Potato. <laughs> All right. Is that with an E at the end or not? Oh, man. So our next meeting is next Monday, March 26th. We have a board meeting and hearing 
on warrant articles and we have the application for 654 and 658 massachusetts avenue um april 9th and then april 23rd we also have 18 t9 chase road yes and we also have the a and r probably from 292 that, uh that's <coughs> indeterminate okay Uh, is there any public comment from the public? Public comment from the board? Uh, just curious. Yeah, sorry, Ken. Don't worry. We'll get out of here. Uh, <laughs> is there any way that we can get, you know, like certain things, they, they just sort of drop out of our site, like the uh, land purchases and that kind of thing. Is there any, any way we can get an update from the BOS at our meetings, like what they've, you know, what's going on over there? You're talking about all the things that they come before us to ask. They come before us. us. Yeah, yeah. Like we have a liaison. We do? Yeah. You mean a board of selectmen liaison? Yes. Oh, yeah. But, 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 yes. <laughs> They're frequently here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, anyway, to get a, just a summary of what was, you know, what happened board? to Who things that, selectmen? especially Damn things that came before us. Is it still? <laughs> um, like, you know, uh, open space comes to us and then we send it on. Yeah, It'd sure, be nice I'm to know what happens with sure it. I'm sure there's ways that we can. I, <laughs> I guess what I would say is with the right of first refusal stuff, yeah. if it's not on, if you don't see it before town meeting, it's dead gone away yep. yeah. okay um and with those there's a 120 day turnaround so mm -hmm. if they're looking to purchase it there's probably going to be a special town meeting to yeah true. vote okay. on funding for that right. um i can talk to the town manager about you know setting up a you know some sort of direct quarterly response or something to that effect yeah, if you maybe. want to do that now what can happen independent i i think that other boards can take up initiatives to acquire the land if they can get grant and funding Correct. to do so. Yes. So like conservation can go after mm. a land purchase independent mm -hmm. of the board of selectmen as long as they can get the grant funds to do it. Because I know that it would like, have to be a hundred percent match, or it have to be a zero percent match rather. Right, right, yeah. Because it's, if there's no funds and ultimately the board of selectmen where the town manager signs those grants that the town will meet those requirements but yes you're correct yeah mine was just about general communications but i guess we're not into that so that's cool no i mean I, we, I, it's something that we can do like i said i think with with the right of first refusal stuff that's you know the follow-through with that is town meeting and, and approving funding mm -hmm. um which is generally what they ask you guys about um if you if you'd like a report back as they do it we can we can do that um, i don't know that they're necessarily in the in the habit of of reporting back their actions after they've asked for action because i think in general they're the end of the line okay but i mean if it's something that you want we can set something up yeah i was just curious if everybody, anybody else felt it was necessary and if not that's fine we can always request feedback from them whenever we want. I mean, oh, yeah. Well, why don't we do that then? We can handle it that way. If something comes before us and we want feedback, we can uh, say, can you send us back a note? How about that? Sure. All right. All right. <laughs> I have a public comment as well. Right. I just want to remind everyone that um, before our next meeting, we will have Palm Sunday. I don't know everyone's different belief systems, but as we go into the springtime of the year, I hope that everyone take some time to reflect on the renewal that each year and each spring brings thank you that palm sunday already went by no it's coming up this sunday oh. uh ongoing items anybody have any comments on those i have one um so our next i know we just are finishing up things for this annual town meeting and our next priorities are going to be from what I've heard uh, recreational marijuana uh, the solar bylaw and possibly signs I was wondering if and when we should move those up on the agenda to directors items so that we can start to discuss them and take action if need be uh, I mean the board has made their desire to survey the community on solar and adult use marijuana known 
um, I did check with the town manager. I did send the board an email indicating that that's certainly something the board has the ac has access to, um, and I made a request for the types of information that you all might be looking for from that survey, so I can put together a, a draft of the survey, and then try to, you know, then you guys can hammer it out and see, we like this, we don't like that, we're not looking for that information, and then we can get it posted. Um, and in the meantime, I think with the adult use marijuana... I don't think so. What? I, I don't think I got that email. Does, what? I don't think I got that email. That we could... That we, so, could, we could do a survey or anything like that? I'm you guys got it? it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Would, I don't, I'm not seeing this either. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and check. I, don't I mean, I, I can re that. that it's not... That would be nice. It, be, it Really, I was just... it was I was trying to kick it off so that you guys would start thinking about yeah. what you wanted and I could start putting something together right. for you. Yeah, I'm not sure that I got um, it. But I'll, I'll look again. I will too, okay. I, I see it. You it's got Feb it? February 14th. <clears throat> wow, that one? Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, so I'd just like to Sorry, move yeah. those things up on the agenda so we can start working on them. I mean, I'm not necessarily looking for drafts yeah. no, by but, any means. But I mean, but with, the, with the adult use marijuana, I, I think that the majority of it is going to be accepting definitions, which mm -hmm. hopefully the state has done for us. Um, and I don't think it makes a lot of sense to vary them. Uh, and then determining, you know, where and how you think placing them as appropriate and mm -hmm. whether it needs to be an overlay district whether it needs to be uh, constrained to a specific district and you know I, I, I'll send out um, the final regulations and they issued a, a new municipal guidance document uh, on Friday uh, so I'll send that along as well uh, I don't know that the regulations are going to be a lot of help to you uh, because they're more geared towards how the Cannabis Control Commission is going to handle their things. Yeah. Uh, and it, 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 it's more process for what they're defining as what and how they're permitting it, but it's it's good background. Yeah. Uh, and really, we just need to look at the, um, the uses that they have defined and, and decide how and where and when we want to permit them. Board comments or concerns? Oh, okay. <laughs> my recollection was that we were going to push off the uh, the endorsement of the um, decisions to be signed by only the chair when we had a full board. That's correct. Yeah, actually, that's true. So, do you want to, Mr. Chair? I uh, this was Ken. Was everybody here? I don't think you were here for I think that we discussion. Only had three, didn't we? Ken and David weren't here for yeah. that no. discussion. That was last week. Yeah, three weeks ago. Three weeks, yeah. So three basically, to make sure we don't have any missteps and to reduce the uh, burden on members of having to come into the office during the week, it was suggested that we possibly just have the chair sign off on the decisions. Not that it would change anything in the decision, just to expedite the process, and it would be the current chair is what we discussed, I believe. So. Fine if, by me. After reconfiguration, I mean, it would take some confidence in myself at this point, but if we reconfigure and you want to change it back, we can change it back, so. Yeah. So, okay, so I'd entertain a motion that we give authority to the chair to endorse decisions as opposed to the entire board. So can moved. I, can oh, I? Sorry. Before you make that motion, can I add something to that? Sure. You may want to do it for, um, you might, may want to do it on an annual basis based on what the, um, the, the, reorganize, the current organization of the board. Yep. So the motion could be phrased as under the current organization of the board. Um, we give idea. the chair the authority to sign decisions in on, on behalf of the board and then every year after reorganization you can revote that motion if if the board feels that the, the chair at that time would would do so appropriately okay i have a comment on that too and it's interesting that greg has the ability to do this and, and most of the rest of us have jobs but um <laughs> wow <laughs> That was even lower than that I was show. low. Wow. I have a job. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, you need more. You need more available. How about I have the dedication to go in? <laughs> he is so much more dedicated than <laughs> yes. Um, my 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 faux pas. Um, 
<laughs> if, if there is someone more willing than perhaps the chair, would that possibly be appropriate? Or is I don't believe so because oh, the, okay. the chair has <laughs> so the chair has power. no power other than organizing and representing the board as its as its chosen facilitator. So if if someone had the ability or desire, I think that person being chair would be the appropriate motion to make at at reorganization. Someone's whistling. Yeah, it's me. So would somebody like to make a motion? I move that we allow the chair currently for this this year for this for, for this, this organization board of the board to uh, sign for the board. One second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mm. Mr. Bernie, that suggested moved me from a no to a <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I, so thank you. <clears throat> All right. Then uh, board comments and concerns. I have one. Just uh, I did reach out to the other chairs of the land use boards, and I think between Adam and myself, we've received positive feedback from enough to initiate a chair's meeting. Um, I plan on reaching out to the Board of Health. I wasn't able to attend their last meeting, but they were the only ones I think we haven't heard back from. So is there any way to Godspeed. help facilitate that? I, I Yes, I can get you information to get in contact with All them. All right. No, no, I meant to actually have the meeting. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. not waiting on his endorsement yes, at this point. And I think he, I sent you an email regarding that, just that... Yeah. And if we reorganize, the chairs would change, but uh, I still think the meeting's important, regardless of who's the chair. So. That's it for me. Okay. Move that we adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, if your name decision. is not David or Greg, you need to sign these plans. <laughs> 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 the uh, endorsement uh, of Pioneer. Uh, Pioneer. Uh,